Hello everyone and welcome to your most favorite show. This is Unplugged Sessions with myself, Uncle T. In this inspiring episode, we are chatting to a lady that I call an epitome of independence, persistence, and success. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for this exciting episode is Royal Dora. She's an author, speaker, stylist, and a businesswoman. Let's go and chat to her and find out what she's got inspiring for you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are back at it. It's another episode of Unplugged Sessions with myself, Uncle T. And today, like I said, we're hosting someone uh, whom I can call an epitome of independence, um, success, and persistence. You know what I'm saying? And at this moment, let me welcome her. Royalder. Hi. Hi. All right, to you. Good, thanks. I, I had to do it like a gentleman. Yeah. Nobody know what I do. It's like, ah, what's ah. up? <laughs> I would even agree. <laughs> I'm How are you doing? Oh, you're a lady in yes. class here. <laughs> Welcome to it. Mm -hmm. um, first things first, so let's talk about creativity. Yes. In your stage when you're growing up, what are the um, artistic things that you're passionate about? I used to believe that I'm going to be a great interior uh, designer. I used to draw a lot and even when there were uh, visitors coming to our schools uh, mm -hmm. for games and stuff, they would ask me to draw on a chalkboard. Uh, you know, a welcoming message and, you know, flowers and all. And I I, I, I really believed that I was going to design houses. I was yeah. going to, um, you know, a whole lot of stuff. Going from a village, we came to a township. Um, how was the transition and the impact that it had on you? It was tough. It was very, very tough. The transition was very hard. Uh, I had a certain accent. I had a very heavy village accent. And there was a way I pronounced words. And yeah. everyone would laugh at me. Oh, it's like? Yeah, like uh, uh, dribop. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm interested in talking about um, the academical part of it, like going to school. Um, I hear the changes in the hood and how you got confused around things mm -hmm. and the setup. But at school, um, what happened? What? How did you adjust and what the impact that you had? Because obviously, you're a, um, uh, a woman with presence, and uh, like you, like you said, when you're growing up. And I just want to know the experience, uh, the impact that you had when you were at your. Um, primary school, high school, and all that? Um, hey, I'm that girl. When I walk in, if you don't have confidence, you're going to disappear. Yeah. If I was not at school, they wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. And if I was there, they would also know. Because they would want me to tell them about my encounters where I was. Yeah. Like I said, I spent so much time of my life in hospital mm -hmm. because I was sick. So I would spend like a month or two not going to school. But the day I'm back, they put me in front of the class to tell them where I have been, the things that I've experienced. And I was the cream of the crop. You mentioned yeah. um, modeling school. Yeah. I remember at some point <laughs> after your high school and you know, do anything in there. life. <laughs> You entered Miss SA. Uh, no, 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 no. It was Press. Miss City Press. Oh, Miss City Press. Yeah. Yes, I was trending. Yeah. Before yeah. all these trends came, I only say I'm the original. Yeah, there was no teacher back then. The, no, I was the original. I was like half naked, <laughs> you know. In the newspaper yeah. for three months, every Sunday. How did it come about? Like you saw an advert and you said, okay, yeah. I'm confident yeah. enough. The City Press encounter was very majestic. I saw the application on the newspaper and then I entered. I was um, I was very young and I, I went through all the processes until I, I became a finalist. Mm -hmm. And I think the the disadvantage that I had was just, I, I think I was a little bit too short. Hey, right. yeah, girls out there, they're very tall, you know, I was like a midget. But uh, the experience, uh, getting to um, 
mingle with a whole lot of people that have been in the industry mm -hmm. and also your confidence levels get to another level where you know you're no longer afraid to be on stage yeah. when a lot of people say dora why are you so comfortable when you speak why are you such a good speaker or oh, you speak so well don't you get nervous i said no it comes with years of practice mm -hmm. i don't need to prepare mm -hmm. there are moments where someone just calls me and says come and say a few words at church I, I i cannot sometimes i don't prepare it's in me if if because i love books as well i always say yeah read books fill yourself with knowledge so that when you stand in front of people you begin to pour out what you have deposited in you mm -hmm. so for me i do not work on the nerves what i do is i work on filling myself with a whole lot of information yeah. due to books i just want to to wrap the part of um uh, speaking like um, the highlight of your journey in speaking what is it that you've learned how have you influenced people and how have they responded to you speaking if you know royal dora it's because of speaking uh, let me be honest it's facebook that has opened many avenues for me yeah uh, the posts the kind of posts compelling posts that i write most people i've spoken to at their events they've never met me before they met me on the stage and trust me, I have delivered what their every penny, those that are able to pay, some is through arrangements, but I, there's a great impact that I made. I think if people had to remember me, they would remember the sound of my voice, you know, echoing in their hearts. Uh, I've spoken at a lot of schools, a lot of organizations, a lot of, uh, more than even preaching. Yes, and although, yes, I wouldn't be basically using the Bible, but I, I always remind them that when you call me, you're calling a, you're calling a spiritual person. We spoke about business at some point before we um, clarified the speaking part and how mm. the journey was. Um, I know at some, point, at some point it has to be, you know, to make business sense. Mm. Um, how did you formalize yourself as a, as a brand that's speaking and as a business mm. or a service provider? Coming from the church, like religion, a church fraternity, it was hard for me to differentiate because people think that you are the preacher, they can just shake, give you a handshake after I've spoken. But I, I also wasn't sure of my ability yeah. until I was told by a few people and I had to tap into the greatness that I had. Mm -hmm. I just thought I'm doing it. I once read a quote that said, um, you do something, passion is doing something that you can go to bed at night without being paid. Yeah. But you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to that. But I realized that after feeling good, I still need bread in my bread mm -hmm. bin. So I had to differentiate an invoice and there. Churches, when I go, most of the time, I do not have a fee. And corporates, I do have an invoice. There is not, for every invoice, there is an invoice. Mm -hmm. yes. So I, I, I am a very compassionate person. And yeah. sometimes you, you find people that will take advantage of mm -hmm. you. But I, as I grow in business, I'm becoming more firm that, um, if I'm putting value in your life, what value yeah, are you putting, putting in, in mine? Yeah. I mean, I cannot go minister, I cannot go speak, and when I come back home, I do not even have a Nothing. cent in my pocket. Yeah. Whereas you said, you came and you've impacted people. So I think also in our black communities, a whole lot of people need to learn that whoever puts value into your life, put it back. Put it back. Yes, because that's why there's a whole lot of depression, yeah. there's a lot of suffering. Mm. A same person that has impacted you during the day, at night they are suffering, mm. because you fail to recognize the need. Mm. So most of the time I came out as a preacher and they would want me as a preacher, but then they don't understand that uh, there's, there, there is a line. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Suddenly we have Shaditi oil. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Shaditi oil. oil. Yeah, yeah. My, oil. my heart beats. Yeah. Because it's named after my daughter. Alright. Um, it's, it's, it's something that came out of me. Because my child was struggling with her and I said, um, I need a solution. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are great hair products on the market, mm -hmm. but what is it that I can do? You know, and I, I, love, I love the internet, I love research, I love reading. So I realized uh, the, the problems uh, of, of black people face uh, mostly when they age uh, the hair, how they use hair and mm -hmm. what are the causes and how we can get it back, you know, uh, restore it. And that passion, when I looked at my child, who's also very energetic when it comes to school activities, that she didn't even have hair. And I said, you know, I'm not going to uh, 
faith. I'm, I'm going to make sure that my child is there and I'm going to discover a product that will work for her. Because she also has a sensitive skin that I needed to work on. And All right. basically when it came, it was just for us. But then after months of using it, I realized that her hair is still changing even the texture. Mine grew like sparingly and I realized that, let me take it to the world. Yeah. yeah, I spent like uh, three days in the kitchen mixing and turning and because I cook it, it's still cooked. So I, I, I ended up making a very good product. How is it going so far as you want to grow it globally? How's the response? Uh, do you think you're getting there? Um, globally, uh, the consistency. It's uh, the first year I stopped and I thought, let me watch how far it will grow. Within the first three months, I yeah. saw it going to six months. Yeah. I saw it going to 12 months. And today it's, uh, it's a year. Yeah. When, when was last year? It was 2018. 18. Yeah, so it's a year old. And I, I also didn't want to uh, rush. I wanted to take my own time, my own pace. And let me tell you, it's in, is it Ohio? In the States? Yeah. Yes, one of the ladies, when it was bought that t uh, side, I was very happy. They had a request from Botswana and uh, wow. there's, 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 there's people that, you know, I think the greatest success is when someone who is using it, who bought it, doubting it the first time comes back um, and buys even more three. Yeah, yes, yeah. there's one lady last week who bought 10 bottles. Wow. So each time I want to quit, I think of those that, okay, <laughs> I've introduced something to them. Yeah. yeah, and there's a lady friend of mine called uh, Wendy, yeah. uh, the owner of Kiyoma Guest House. She said to me, we're not going to use your oil and then next next thing you are you, you, you're done. Mm -hmm. You said you're not doing, doing it anymore. anymore. You can't introduce a product to us and then you quit. We talk a lot about things that are very much important, but the most important thing now is that um, you were speaking, you were drawing, you were dressing, mm. and now you penned it all out. Yeah. Uh, okay, before I answer that one, I love the fact that you spoke about drawing. I said I wanted to be an interior designer, yeah. but then it never happened. So I always see if it has come into my dress sense. Yeah, right, yeah, from designing yeah. houses, it's now it's, I do my hair, I don't go to the salon, I do oh. my nails, I mm -hmm. do everything at home. So it's like designing is broad. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, it's very broad. Now you design yeah. yourself. Yeah, the book. <laughs> the my book. book, yeah. The book that painting you it, painting every Four story. Four flipping years. Mind. I don't yeah. know if it's a, it's a sore word. Tailored woman. A tailored woman. Let's talk about tailored yes. woman. Uh, the first name was Torn and Tailored okay. uh, by the King. So. Uh, we're going back to designing. Mm -hmm. I used to stay with my, my, one of my covenant mothers who would cut clothes. I would see how he cuts, she cuts them and they fall on the floor and then, but the final product, you know that beautiful image that comes out. So they were torn and now they were put together. Yeah. So that's the depiction of my life. I was torn right in the world and then I was pieces and then the key which is Jesus put me. So the name was long when torn and tailored by the king. So I just thought, let me write about the current Tailored woman by the king. But if you read it, there are pieces of me that were torn. But as you read the book, I think it's 21 chapters. Yeah. As you read the book down, you can tell she was torn. But now she's a whole woman. So this book. Um, How long did it take you uh, to write the book? It took me four years wow. to write this book. Mm -hmm. It will take three months. Mm -hmm. For me, I lost it. Uh, I don't know how many times. Uh, there were problems with that, uh, and there are things that I wrote about in the book that I needed to come to terms with before the world gets to experience them. That means you were honest with yourself. Yeah, the book is, is, is if you think my Facebook posts are honest and truthful, you must get my book. So I had to come to terms with a whole lot of things, and there was a whole lot of setbacks because I believe that is a very powerful book that will cause a shake in people's lives. And like we said when we were doing the interviews with all the disruptions yes, that yes. every great thing, thing yeah. yeah goes through trials yeah. whatever it is it must go through you know a little bit of suffering mm -hmm. 